Today I'm going to be looking at a bike that you might not be aware of. You no doubt have heard of the Schwinn Axum. This was the original, followed by the Axum DP, a dropper post equipped version. Then they released Axums in sized frames. I've reviewed them all and currently own two. This is the fourth Axum, a bit different than its name sharing counterparts in that this Axum has 24 inch wheels. Aimed at riders 48 to 60 inches tall, meaning in most cases this could be an Axum your youngling can ride. It's called the Axum Sport 24. A quick glance at the design elements, it looks definitely very similar, yet there are a few things I see right off that are a bit different than the larger Axums. For starters, this is clearly marketed for younglings, and what I find interesting is the way it's listed on the Walmart website. The Axum Sport 24, it's available in two colors, a gray with pink accents and a black with what looks to be orange accents. I did notice one thing, there was a G on the box for this gray, and I see the title here listed like this, but when I scroll down to the item specifics, it clearly shows the gray model as female, and when I go to the same specs for the black model, that says male. Usually that means some frame differences, but I went back and forth looking at the two models, and they look to be identical aside from the color, so I'm going to call it a whatever color you prefer bike. I know someone with a high dollar full suspension mountain bike, viewers have seen it recently here on Kev Central, they spent big bucks adding pink lettering and pink accents, and it looks amazing. So for the purposes of mountain biking, just know this bike is available in two colors. The real question is how does this stack up? Is it a true Axum, just smaller? The components, they're going to tell us, so let's start up top, as I often do, at the bars. And these are wide, proportionally, measuring 640 millimeters grip end to grip end. Mountain bike beefy, just like their Axum siblings, with 31.8 as the bar diameter. Grips, not lock on, these are rubber slip ons. Other bar complements are the brake levers for the mechanical disc brakes we'll look at in a minute. These levers, they're scaled to the size of this bike, meaning they're smaller than what I'm used to seeing. They're metal levers, by the way. The 29er Axums are one by, so is this 24. It also has a trigger shifter for working through the eight available speeds. Connecting the bars to the fork is a short mountain bike stem. I measured this at 45 millimeters. Below that, the head tube. The Axum was one of the bikes to introduce tapered head tubes to big box bike shopping masses. The Axum Sport technically has a tapered head tube, but only in the aesthetic sense. You can see the unmistakable taper back inwards at the bottom. That means the look is there, but the ability to internally house a tapered fork is not. Which is why this has a straight steer fork, which is also a very familiar fork to budget shoppers at Walmart. There's nothing up top, no lockout or preload adjustment. The art support is, well, big box, as are the stanchions. We've seen forks just like this on countless affordable bikes. It's not the caliber of the 29er Axum factory forks, but it doesn't have to be. Riders that will fit this bike are going to be lighter. The suspension travels 60 millimeters. Here's something I didn't expect on this 24 inch model, but I'm glad this carried over. The front wheel is quick release. The steel hubs also big box familiar, but I will say these have slightly increased in quality over the past few years. Spokes black steel, the rims alloy, double wall alloy, Schwinn branded, and they're wide, wide enough to accommodate these tires that are 24 by 2.40. These are trail friendly knobbies that give the bike a very capable look. Width at the rear triangle, meaning tire clearance, I would say this is about as wide as you can go with this frame, which we will get to in just a second. First, let's take a look at the drivetrain. How does it compare to the Axum bikes that we're used to? Well, first, the pedals are just like those bikes. They're plastic Schwinn branded, though they're scaled down to the size of this bike. As are the crank arms, alloy HDL branded size 152 millimeters. The square taper bottom bracket, that's a 68 millimeter. The chain ring, a single 32 millimeter parity there. At the rear, well, that's all different. Starting with this derailleur, which isn't a Pro Rush or a Falcon, this is a Micro Shift 26C, like you often see on bikes like the Schwinn Aluminum Comp. These are usable. I would argue even more capable on a smaller bike like this, where the bounce test shows that it handles itself quite well. The smaller frame means less drop, less impact, so this will work. Even with 7 and 8 speeds, we've grown quite accustomed to the ultra-wide range freewheels and cassettes. Here, Schwinn had to make a strategic decision, and the one they made was equipping this with a mega range freewheel, 13 to 34 too. It kind of fits, considering the size of the bike. 
One thing this bike has that the 29er Axoms don't, dual rear reflectors where this tan paint came from, I have no idea. Let's talk about the frame, and by the way, there is a replaceable hanger on this frame, a good thing since this is an aluminum frame, 6061 aluminum alloy. I think it is an attractive frame. The welds look as good as its more expensive counterparts, and the Axum Sport 24 also has internal cable routing, though no dropper support. I don't even know if there are droppers for 24-inch bikes. This gray model is a glossy gray with pink and blue graphics, and those graphics are clear-coated over. Tube design. Both the down tube and the top tube have a modern tapering profile. The geometry is modern too. I'll put my measurements down in the description, but the main one people ask about the head tube angle, that's 68 degrees on this Axum Sport 24. Other components of note, I showed you the levers earlier, the mechanical disc wrecks, 160 millimeters for the rotor up front. The calipers, they're generic, but they should stop this small bike quite well. At the rear, I really expected to see a 140 millimeter rotor. Nope, 160 millimeters there too. And both rotors have the Schwinn star. There is a lot of good in this smallest Axum. There are also a couple of budgetary decisions, like the bolt-on rear wheel and yesterday's bottom bracket. And always a plus when there is a kickstand, the rubber boot to protect floors. Going straight up from there, we get to the saddle. The Schwinn branded matte vinyl saddle with gloss trim. The seat mount, it's big box. The seat post, it's held in place with the quick release seat post clamp. The post itself, 200 millimeters long with a diameter of 27.2 millimeters. Here's the post at max extension, adequate for a bike marketed at four to five foot tall riders. I am too large to ride this bike, but I think it's one parents might have some interest in. This particular bike is being donated in its new condition to the local trail nonprofit. Thanks, Schwinn. That's my evaluation. I want to know what you think. It's your time to speak up. What do you think about this Axum Sport 24? And did you even know this existed? Or maybe you've already purchased one of these. Comment below. Let me hear what you have to say. Also, let me know if you'd be interested in seeing more bikes like this, or bikes in this class. I have periodic requests for 24-inch wheel models, so help me gauge the interest because it is you that ultimately drive the content here at Kev Central. I'll put a link down in the description. And remember, using links on this channel is a great way to support the channel without costing you anything extra. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.